The following traffic pattern lesson is based on the book Lesson Plans by Arlen McMahon, published by Aviation Supplies and Academics. This maneuver briefing shows flight instructors what to draw and say when teaching traffic patterns. The traffic pattern is a standardized rectangle around the runway that provides an orderly flow of traffic for aircraft arriving, departing, and operating in the vicinity of an airport. At the same time, the traffic pattern provides a flow of cockpit tasks that a pilot must complete in preparation for takeoff and or landing. In this lesson, you will learn the correct procedures to arrive at, depart from, or operate around both towered and non-towered airports. We will also take a look at the parts that make up the traffic pattern, as well as the tasks a pilot needs to complete in the process, and proper procedures for performing the maneuver. The traffic pattern will require you to plan ahead so that all of the cockpit tasks are completed in an orderly, unrushed flow. Here we have a typical rectangular traffic pattern. The pattern leg names are as follows, downwind, base, final, and crosswind. The downwind leg runs parallel to and approximately one half to one mile away from the runway. On the downwind leg, you are traveling in the opposite direction as your intended landing. The base leg is at the approach end of the runway and runs perpendicular to your final approach path. The final leg runs directly down the center of the approach end of the runway and is the last leg of the pattern prior to touchdown. The crosswind leg lies perpendicular to the runway beyond the departure end of the runway. The airport facility directory is a primary resource for information related to specific airport operations. In it, you can find information regarding special procedures that might exist including noise abatement, non-standard or right-hand traffic patterns, or obstacle clearance. Something else of importance you can find in the AFD is traffic pattern altitude. The FAA recommends airplanes use a 1,000 foot above ground level altitude for traffic pattern operations. However, due to unique airport environments, there may be exceptions or specific traffic pattern altitudes designated for your destination airport. It is important to use the proper traffic pattern altitude to ensure safety and conformity in the airport environment. Communication information such as ATIS, AWOS, ASOS, ATC, and CTAF frequencies can also be found in the AFD, along with tower operating hours, providing you with means of obtaining the latest information about the airport and who you need to communicate with during arrival and landing at your destination. The active runway will be the one most aligned with the wind. At tower-controlled airports, you will be told which is the active runway. At non-towered airports, you will determine this based on wind conditions and current traffic flows. Turns in the traffic pattern will be to the left, unless specified otherwise in the AFD. The traffic pattern requires a high level of awareness and good planning. You will want to divide cockpit tasks into small lists that you can accomplish in an orderly, unrushed flow as you prepare to enter and complete each phase or leg of the traffic pattern. The first of these lists is setting up ahead of time. Preparation for landing at a non-towered airport begins when you are about 10 miles out. To set up for the airport environment, Tune in the appropriate ATIS or AWOS frequency to get weather and airport information for your destination. One of the key elements in listening to ATIS or AWOS is to obtain wind information which will determine the active runways currently being used for takeoff and landing. This is also a good time to complete your pre-landing checklist. Your aircraft will have a specific pre-landing checklist that must be completed before each and every landing. Perform the checklist items step by step to ensure that you and the aircraft are prepared before entering the traffic pattern. With airport information and your pre-landing checklist completed, you are now ready to communicate your location and intentions to ATC or over the CTAF. At controlled fields, the time of contact with ATC will depend on the airspace you are entering and you may need to establish radio contact sooner. Before we move on to the cockpit tasks to complete during each leg of the pattern, it is crucial to note the importance of scanning for traffic and obstacles when entering and performing the traffic pattern maneuver. 
Your close proximity to an airport increases the potential that another or possibly several other aircraft may be operating in the vicinity, both in the air and on the ground. As your altitude decreases throughout the maneuver, obstacles on the ground become increasingly important to the safety of your approach and ultimate landing. The primary objective of the downwind leg is to stabilize the airspeed and align the aircraft parallel with the runway. When you are abeam the touchdown point, slow the aircraft down and stabilize by making necessary adjustments for wind and maintaining proper altitude. By the time you have these tasks completed, you should be about 45 degrees from touchdown and ready to turn base. Scan for traffic and turn onto base only when you and the aircraft are ready. The objective on base is to stabilize the glide path. The glide path is your path of intended travel as you descend in the pattern. Reduce power to approach speed for landing and begin your descent to establish your glide path and achieve the desired descent rate and attitude to your planned touchdown point. Continue to scan for traffic both in the air and around the runway and prepare for your turn onto final. As you perform and complete your turn to final, make only small corrections as necessary, reduce power slightly, and maintain a stabilized approach speed and glide path. Continue to scan for traffic and mentally prepare for a possible go-around. Now that we've covered the basic elements that make up the traffic pattern and established our cockpit task lists, let's talk about some of the other factors influencing the maneuver. Wind is a factor that plays a large part in deciding not only the direction of landing, but also the compensations you need to make. In this first example, it will be necessary for you to anticipate the turn and make it early so the wind doesn't take you out wide of the traffic pattern and desired ground track. Keep the nose of the aircraft pointed slightly in the direction of the wind when flying the downwind leg so your ground track remains parallel to the runway and you are not swept out too wide. When turning onto base and into the wind, your ground speed will decrease and you will have a little more time as you make your turn to final. In this next example, the wind is coming from the other side of the runway, so your heading on crosswind will need to be slightly into the wind as your ground speed decreases and you have a little extra time to make your turn to downwind. After turning downwind, maintain a slight nose right attitude so that you are not swept back across the runway and you are able to maintain ground track parallel to the runway. Your turn onto base will be made with a tailwind, causing your ground speed to increase and giving you a little less time to make your turn onto final. You will need to anticipate this and make your turn to final sooner so you are not swept beyond the runway center line. Now, let's talk about entry to the traffic pattern. Make sure your entry into the pattern is done at the proper traffic pattern altitude. Remember, recommended traffic pattern altitude is 1,000 feet above ground level for most small airplanes. However, pre-flight planning and research in the AFD has provided you with the traffic pattern altitude information you need for your destination. You have planned your entry at a 45 degree angle to the downwind leg. If your heading upon arrival at the airport is consistent with this entry, it will be simple to align your aircraft with the 45 degree angle and follow it to the downwind leg. However, you may be coming from a different direction and active runways may have changed, forcing you to alter your arrival strategy in order to intercept the 45 degree entry. Entry to the traffic pattern should be made at an airspeed less than 200 knots and appropriate for the aircraft. When departing the standard traffic pattern, Airplanes should continue straight out or exit with a 45 degree left turn beyond the departure end of the runway after reaching pattern altitude. For aircraft flying non-standard or right traffic patterns, exit straight out or with a 45 degree turn to the right. Pilots need to be aware of any traffic entering the traffic pattern prior to commencing a turn. Refer to Advisory Circular 90-66 for details on recommended standard traffic patterns and practices for aeronautical operations at airports without operating control towers. Traffic pattern maneuvers take place in the airport environment where other aircraft are likely operating in close proximity, so collision avoidance practices are extremely important and must be employed. At the top of this list is ATC clearances and phraseology. 
At Controlled Fields, you must obtain required ATC clearances. If you accept a clearance from ATC, you must comply or have it amended. You do not have to accept a clearance if you feel it compromises safety. Remember, you are the pilot in command. Use proper phraseology when communicating with ATC, and if you doubt a clearance or transmission, ask for clarification. Right-of-way rules are second on the list of collision avoidance practices. Right-of-way rules apply when performing traffic pattern operations. However, be willing to give up your right-of-way to keep yourself and others safe. Refer to 14 CFR Part 91.113 for right-of-way rules. Another collision avoidance tactic is to maintain spacing by not following behind. Maintain proper spacing from other aircraft by either slowing to approach speed or slower, or widening the traffic pattern. Also, don't follow directly behind another plane. Fly 30 to 45 degrees outside of the other aircraft's traffic pattern. S-turns are not recommended on short and low final. If the approach does not feel right, go around and try again. Good cockpit management is needed, so keep your head up and look around. One of the most important areas of concern when operating in a traffic pattern is wake turbulence avoidance. Best practices for avoiding wake turbulence on takeoff are as follows. Moments ago, the large plane in this picture landed here. When taking off after a larger plane has landed, be sure to plan your rotation point beyond the point of the previous landing in order to avoid wake turbulence on takeoff. The rotation point of the large plane in this picture is here. When taking off after a large plane has taken off, plan liftoff before reaching the previous plane's rotation point and plan an early turn upwind to avoid wake turbulence. Best practices for avoiding wake turbulence on landing are as follows. This time, the large plane is landing here. To avoid wake turbulence when landing after, stay high and maintain an approach path above that of the previous plane, touching down beyond its touchdown point. This plane's rotation point is here. When landing on a runway where a plane has just taken off, plan to land before the previous plane's rotation point. Now that we have covered the key elements of the traffic pattern, let's look at what you will be doing in your flight lesson. You will take off from a towered airport in Class Charlie airspace, fly to a Class Golf non-towered airport, enter the traffic pattern and land before returning to your original point of departure. When you are 10 miles from the pilot-controlled non-towered airport, do the following. Listen to AWOS and determine the active runway. Announce your intentions on the appropriate CTAF and listen for other pilots in the vicinity. Observe other aircraft already in the pattern and conform to the traffic pattern in use. Plan your entry at a 45 degree ground track angle to the downwind leg, abeam the midpoint of the landing runway. When you are 10 miles out from entering controlled airspace at the airport with the control tower, do the following. Listen to ATIS. Announce your position and intentions to approach control or the tower. ATC will likely direct you to a 45 degree entry to the downwind leg, a beam the midpoint of the landing runway. While you may be anticipating this, be sure to listen as the tower may have other instructions for you. Keep your head up and eyes out and continue to scan for traffic. About five miles from the runway, complete the first pre-landing checklist. Once you have begun entry to the traffic pattern, performance of the maneuver at both the towered and non-towered airport is essentially the same. Arrive at the appropriate traffic pattern altitude a minimum of two miles from the airport. Maintain a safe altitude while in the pattern considering the possibility of an engine failure. Slow to appropriate approach speed for your aircraft, unless conditions dictate otherwise or until a beam the point of intended landing. Correct for wind drift to maintain the pattern using about one half mile to one mile distance from the runway along downwind, base, and final legs. Stay alert and keep eyes and ears open for traffic before turning on each leg. Be aware of wake turbulence and wind shear factors that may come into play and complete your pattern to landing. Use this handy checklist to prepare for your flight. Fill in the blanks with information appropriate to your aircraft and route of flight and get it signed off by your instructor. Read through your checklist a few times and mentally go through the motions before your flight lesson begins. Any questions?